Now we're going to review a few properties of semiconductor crystals before we continue with our discussion of electron dynamics in energy bands. Uh, so semiconductor crystals have resistivities in the range 10 to minus 2 to 10 to 9 ohm per centimeter roughly of course. And one distinct feature of uh, semiconductors is that if you plot resistivity versus temperature for a semiconductor, you will see that the resistivity will decrease with increasing temperature. And this can be understood easily because we have the thermal energy becoming uh, more important and exciting more electrons to the conduction band, creating more empty states in the valence band. These empty states we will call uh, holes and uh, the electrons in the conduction band and the holes in the valence band will contribute to conduction therefore we will have a high conductivity or low resistivity at high temperatures so if you compare this to metals if you remember uh, for metals we had uh, this type of behavior so uh, for metals the resistivity increases with increasing temperature and that was basically due to electron phonon collusions at high temperatures and electron impurity or el electron lattice imperfection collusions at low temperatures so this is the behavior for metals so this is the behavior for semiconductors where we, we have a completely different temperature dependence of resistivity okay at zero Kelvin, semiconductors become insulators. Why? Because the, the band gap, even though it's small, uh, becomes much higher than the thermal energy. Therefore, electrons cannot get excited from the valence band to the conduction band. And we don't have empty states for electrons to move into. Therefore, conduction becomes more difficult and resistivity goes above, let's say, 10 to 14 ohm centimeter. Now we uh, categorize semiconductors as elemental semiconductors like silicon, germanium, etc. Uh, we have three five compound semiconductors, so we're referring to group three and group five in the periodic table. These are gallium arsenide, indium antimonide, etc. Two six compound semiconductors, these are like zinc sulfide, cadmium sulfide, etc. And four four compound semiconductors, a good example is silicon carbide. Now, if we look at the band diagram of an intrinsic semiconductor, intrinsic means the semiconductor does not have impurities that can uh, provide uh, uh, valence electrons into the conduction band, and therefore the, the, the semiconductor is just pure semiconductor, it's intrinsic. At zero Kelvin, we will have field valence band and empty conduction band. So uh, if we plot uh, energy versus uh, X, so what we're plotting here is the conduction band edge and valence band edge. So if you look at the uh, case space plot, we have uh, this is our conduction band. This is, uh, sorry, valence band. This is our valence band. This is our conduction band and we're plotting the minimum of the conduction band and maximum of the valence band in direct space. So we have uh, these guys being plotted against each other uh, and as we move in the crystal we're looking at the behavior of these band edges. So what we see is of course a, a, a band gap here. Uh, and that basically corresponds to the energy difference between the conduction band and valence band edges. And if you remember, that band gap is due to uh, having standing wave solutions at the brilliant zone boundary. So the band gap is the energy difference between the conduction band edge and valence band edge. And at a finite temperature, electrons get thermally excited to the conduction band. Now, if we have a photon that is incident on a semiconductor, uh, which carries an energy h bar omega g such that this energy matches that of the band gap there will be a resonant absorption of this photon and it will result in an electron getting excited from the valence band edge to the conduction band edge creating an electron hole pair electron hole pair so we, we are going to obtain an empty state in the valence band uh, and a full state in the conduction band. So this is an electron-hole pair. 
And if the process like this involves a, the motion of the electron from one band edge to the other band edge with no change in the k vector, this is called a direct absorption process. In a direct absorption process, if you look at the absorption coefficient, we see a marked increase in the absorption coefficient uh, as we reach the, uh, an energy that is equal to the band gap energy. Now, on the other hand, as opposed to this, we may have a scenario when the, uh, where the valence band edge does not coincide with the uh, minimum in the conduction band. Uh, so, in this case, the electron uh, uh, will absorb a photon uh, and that's going to uh, end up giving us a, a, phonon, uh, a, a phonon emission and this is going to involve a change in the k vector of the electron in order to make it to the uh, conduction band edge. That's called an indirect absorption process. Uh, there is delta k involved in this process and we see the incoming photon energy is equal to the band gap energy plus the phonon energy that, uh, the, that has been created. So there is a delta k involved and we see that uh, when h bar omega is equal to the band gap energy plus uh, the phonon energy, we have the maximum uh, in the uh, absorption. So th this is the band gap basically, and this is the band gap plus h bar omega, and that's where we have maximum absorption in the process. That's indirect absorption process, which involves a change in the k vector. Now these processes can be used to measure the band gap obviously by changing the uh, f frequency of the incoming photon we can look at the absorption coefficient and we can determine from this uh, the band gap. Also uh, by looking at conductivity as a function of temperature and uh, electron concentration as a function of temperature we can determine band gap. How so? If you remember <coughs> we have the whole effect and the whole coefficient gives us uh, the uh, carrier concentration n here, so we can use this whole coefficient to determine the changes in the carrier concentration and that will uh, tell us uh, when we have reached the band gap in the, uh, in the energy. So uh, as for example of uh, uh, indirect band gap semiconductors, we have silicon and germanium. Direct band gap semiconductors are like gallium arsenide and intium antimonide. And direct band gap semiconductors are uh, used to, to make a solid state laser. So they have an important uh, application. Okay, so in summary, we, we talked about uh, semiconductor crystal properties. They have a resistivity that is greater than metals but less than insulators. The, uh, the resistivity versus temperature has a distinct behavior. Resistivity decreases with increasing temperature. We have elemental 3, 5, 2, 6 and 4, 4 compound semiconductors. At 0 Kelvin, they are all insulators. If the uh, in semiconductor does not have impurities, it's called an intrinsic semiconductor. And we have um, the energy band diagram that can be plotted in direct space uh, by looking at the conduction band edge and valence band edge uh, like this. And we can see that uh, at a finite temperature, electrons will get excited from one band edge to the ba other band edge, creating electron hole pairs that can uh, lead to conduction. Now, electron hole pairs can also be created by illumination. So if we illuminate the semiconductor with a uh, with light that has an energy exactly equal to the band gap energy, uh, if the conduction band edge and valence band edges coincide, as you can see here, we have a direct absorption process. The uh, incoming photon energy is directly uh, create, uh, converted to electron energy that is moving from one band edge to the other band edge with no change in the k vector. This is called a direct absorption process where the absorption is uh, significantly higher at uh, this energy, band gap energy. Now, if we don't have the minima, uh, minimum of the conduction band and maximum of the valence band uh, coinciding, then the, the photon absorption process will involve the emission of a phonon, in which case we have an indirect absorption process, and uh, the, the market increase in the absorption coefficient will occur when we have the incoming photon energy equal to the band gap plus the uh, energy of the emitted phonon. 
and these processes are used to measure the band gap also the market increase in the uh, conductivity uh, and the increase in the electron concentration when we have uh, uh, when we apply an energy when we increase the energy of the system by the band gap energy will tell us uh, about the band gap uh, and one way to measure the resistivity uh, the uh, electron concentration remember or rather the carrier concentration is by looking at the whole coefficient which is minus one over any this is for metals for semiconductors uh, we have to consider the contribution from electrons and holes so electron hole pairs so uh, this has to be uh, modified uh, for semiconductors so that is uh, one issue here Silicon and germanium are indirect band gap semiconductors. Gallium arsenide and indium antimonide are examples of direct band gap semiconductors.